junk air truck. We're doing a bunch of stuff to the junk air truck, which is, uh, you can barely see it. That one right there, our 85 bullnose. Uh, we wrapped up the uh, carburetor swap, 95%-ish. Um, the rest of the stuff that needs to be finished up with that conversion is just the fuel system uh, as far as fuel pumps go. But um, in the meantime, I'm collecting parts for other parts of the whole build. And one of the things I needed was a transfer case. <clears throat> and I do have one on my shelf that I could use. Got to fix the headroom. Um, it's from a Bronco and I really want to save it for this truck because that has a um, uh, it's a non-slip yoke or it's a fixed yoke transfer case and uses a double carton uh, drive shaft and that's what I want to do for this. The junkyard truck we're not really lifting it um, so in this case a regular slip yoke transfer case um, is perfect for this application and uh, we don't have to worry about our U-joints being you know misaligned or whatever or having to phase things um, so that's cool and I found uh, on Facebook someone was selling a transfer case and transmission uh, it came out of a 94 F-150 or no F-250 uh, standard cab short box three-quarter ton truck 200 bucks uh, for the transfer case and transmission is still cheaper than uh, pulling a transfer case from the junkyard because uh, they want like 239 and then there's a $40 core so you know you got you know there's a there's a few bucks there and I was able to save that by uh, picking up this transfer case and transmission um, the transmission is one of interest um, <clears throat> I've kind of hinted about the uh, AOD in the other truck about keeping it instead of doing a five-speed swap um, my initial thought was I was going to take the AOD have it rebuilt have it converted to four-wheel drive um, but I kind of lost some steam on that uh, because I saw this and I've been watching a lot of automatic transmission rebuild videos and stuff and kind of learning some of the tools that are needed to do you know pretty much a standard rebuild um, so I got a few tools I need to get because uh, I think we're going to rebuild this um, like we did the uh, 4BT in this truck so uh, I picked up an E4OD and this is from a 94 F-150 um, it has been sitting outside, so we're going to have to clean. Um, the rust is not too bad. It's just surface, so I'm going to have to polish these uh, pieces up here. Uh, but basically, um, we need to figure out what this thing needs. I was told that the truck had pretty much no miles, or low miles. It had miles, or low miles. Um, the reason why it was parted out was the truck was wrecked. Um, so they pulled the transmission out. The uh, kid was going to put this in another truck. Uh, he went a different route, and so now he's got this just sitting around. So um, I uh, figured, you know, 200 bucks is a good gamble. If I don't, if this transmission's junk and I decide not to use it, it really isn't a big waste. I got the transfer case I need, so I didn't really waste any money. Um, but I would like to. Um, use this transmission if, if at all possible. If it's not going to be too cost prohibitive to you know, fix up. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't have a bunch of water in it. it I, at this point it really doesn't matter because we're going to tear it apart and clean it up. But as long as we have no hard part damage that damages the case, we should be good to go. The fact that it's already a four-wheel drive transmission just simplifies a whole bunch right there. Um, it does look like it needs a new shift lever. Um, I think my friend Scott has one. Uh, so maybe uh, he'll uh, give that up. I actually really want to run the older style shifter, but I don't think I have an option with this one. I'm going to have to run the newer style uh, shifter, and that's fine. Um, but I want to spend today's video on this transmission. 
I'm gonna get her moved over. We're gonna uh, see if it's got any fluid in it and uh, start tearing it apart. I will need to get a torque converter for this. Uh, they had the torque converter, but apparently it was still on the engine. I think they pulled the engine and transmission out as one deal and then just separated it without pulling the torque converter. Um, <clears throat> they're gonna give it to me. I don't really want it necessarily, um, but we may, may take it anyways. But here, let me show you the fluid that's in it. What I was worried is that there would be water in it, but if, as long as there's no water in it, we can work with it. So, I didn't see any water in it. It smells like it came out of the bottle. It looks really good. See, it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it's good fluid. So a lot of people mess around with, oh, dropping the pan and doing all this weird fancy, start with the back and whatnot. You know, you got a dipstick tube that's half inch or bigger. One of these extractor straws will fit all the way down into the tranny. This is how I change the fluid in my Lincoln. Super easy, no messing around. It's a little dark, but it's uh, I can see through it though. Alright, we'll let that let it work on that for a little bit. I might lift that transfer case up and put a block of wood under it. See, yeah, that fluid is pretty good actually. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought it was coming out of a bottle. Well, I think I got about probably almost a gallon out of it. Maybe uh, three quarters of a gallon was still in there. That's the one thing I, I don't like about automatics is, you know, there's, they're all hydraulically driven. So there's a lot of fluid that lives inside these things. Even when you drain the pan, there's still going to be, you know, a few quarts within the valve body area and plus you know if you got your torque converter that's got fluid in it you got fluid still in the pump there's cavities that hold fluid the uh, servo here is going to have some fluid in it i think this one only has one servo and one shift band okay here we go Hopefully not stripped out. Well, I'm hoping that this one's gonna be able to clean up because um, the AOD setup. Uh, while someone quoted me 1500 bucks to rebuild it and convert it to four-wheel drive, um, I myself was not able to locate new parts for that, except for the tail shaft housing, you can get new, but the shaft, um, I couldn't find it. Uh, but you can find those parts for these things all day long, uh, for relatively cheap. Uh, the other thing I might do, this is kind of the predecessor to the 4R100. And I think if I'm right, uh, after watching Ford Tech make you loco, uh, the E4 or the 4R100 four wheel drive pans, or just any of the pans, have a drain plug right here. So I think I might buy a new Ford pan for this. You know, when we're all said and done, if this is, you know, rebuildable, um, I'll get that pan. That way we can have a drain bolt right here. I'm not too worried about getting dirt and stuff in here because we're just gonna We're gonna rebuild this thing. I just don't want any I'm contradicting Contradicting myself. I just don't want any dirt getting into it. I hate to waste the money put a torque converter in this and then slam it in the truck and then find out it's garbage. 
Because someone can say it was, you know, ran good when parked. Oh, yeah. Well, I like this gasket. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. This is what we need right here. Let's just get stuff off of here. Not there. That truck there needs a freaking muffler, man. I'm gonna clean all this hardware. She's gonna go. Wrong hole. Uh, where are we at? Right here. So the nuts are 10 millimeter. And there's five of them. And then I think I forgot how this comes off. Take these all off. There's a long one here. So that might be important. Another long one. Another long one. Another long one. Short one. Is this different than the other? Okay. So all the there are long ones must go all the way to the case. Long. One. This will come off. Okay. We'll get her back together. We're not a super big rush. Oh, there goes more fluid. Trans go, yep, that's been rebuilt. Not a whole lot of trash in this valve body here. She's relaxing. There goes even more fluid. Let's just let her run. Okay. One check ball is kind of stuck in there. There it goes. So remember, we had a check ball here and a check ball there. Gotta do that. Gotta tap on the connector to push it through. Do we have any spring and sproing and stuff going on here? Boing! It just flies off. Oh yeah, there we go. So, there we go. Out we come. Yeah, this was rebuilt a long time ago, these seals. Uh, right here, this is starting to get hard, so. Okay. These two with the big holes. Go in the center. And then this one here. The smaller hole goes here. And I don't think we can mix those up. Nope. Yeah. Is it a 10? Why, it's a 10 millimeter.
problem is we're not biting onto it all the way. That's gonna that's gonna be a problem. Just kind of shock that a little bit. There we go. Just go ahead and crack the rest of these. While we're at it, <laughs> did you think it was going to snap? It's only steel going into aluminum. Okay. Well, it's kind of creaky. Keep hearing this tapping noise. And I think it's my neighbors up the street. They're uh, working on their Chevy Colorado. No, no, it's not. It's me. Of course, right full fluid. Oh, we got plastic thrust washers. Nice. Okay. I'm going to keep my gaskets just in case there's any different different ones oh we're getting into the fun stuff here I am gonna have to find my long flathead screwdriver let's get you down to a more personal level here how about that okay yeah there's just a little bit of water back down here but it's not rusting or corroding anything so we'll just clean that up you could probably reuse this bear, uh, bearing here. This one feels pretty good. Oh, yeah, we can. Okay. So far, we're looking pretty good. Let's see. Does this come out next? We got sprag assembly on this one. Oh, this looks nice. Yeah, we'll take this one apart here. There we go. Something like that. We'll take this guy out here and see what we got going on. bad. I'm going to lay this face down and as I take things out I'm going to keep them in order. So we got a clutch here. This one doesn't look too bad. It's not burnt. And the teeth here aren't all wore out so pretty good. Pretty good so far. Okay, we got a steel. And then we got a clutch. And a steel. These steels look pretty good. Clutch looks okay. I again, I don't know which which one this one is. Bunch of magical voodoo shtick going on in these things. Uh, let's see. Is this our center support? Yeah, this is our center support. So let's... I better uh, have the camera on in case we got a money shot here. There's that 
end is coming out now. There we go. <laughs> so what we had is spring pressure there. So we might have to uh, make a tool to push that down to get that snap ring back in. Fine. Now I need to get the snap ring out of here. Come on now. That's like that. Took the bolts out. There we go. Just got a little bit of, a little bit of help there. Come on now. Uh, if we get one of these bearings in the kit, we might throw a new one in there, but that one feels really good. I kind of like to put new uh, new stuff in there. We got uh, cast iron ceiling rings. It looks like okay. That's like that's like a gallon right there. Uh, okay. Oh, look at that plastic. Uh, let's see. There's a shift bin in there. Here we got some more clutches. That one looks okay. That one's starting to burn up. Yeah, these clutches are starting to burn up just a little bit. So the steels are really good on this, but these clutches are definitely starting to burn. Yeah, we'll need to. Uh, yeah, we're gonna put new bushings and stuff. I might. I'm gonna. There's some tools I'm gonna buy for this. We'll know when we're wrong. Okay, here's our shift band, intermediate shift band. Quite a stack up of parts there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, that's cooked. Yeah, I'm so glad I didn't just throw this in. And we definitely had a E40 nose going on here. Pretty sure um, when these are not bad, you don't have to do this. There's, see all those dots? What the hell is that? Oh yeah, this piece is toast. This is cooked and failing. So actually, oh yeah. We're gonna upgrade this to the steel one. Planetaries are blue and purple, they're cooked. So we're gonna need a new planetary uh, assembly there. Uh, Sunshell, will that just come out? Yeah, so. Oh, the other thing I wanted to point out uh, before we get, so. Because this whole thing's aluminum, look at the uh, look at the splines. You see how they're starting to waller out. Um, yeah, <laughs> it uh, it's about ready to strip out. Uh, but uh, E4ODs usually have just a round. 
part to this uh, shell here. This is a 4R100 uh, shell because of this little raise and I guess it has something to do with clearancing a derivative organ of some sort. I have no idea. I don't know. Pop it out of a fixed slot. Just spin her out. Snap it good so far. Why are you gonna come out? whole lot of clearance on it seems okay also aluminum we may uh, look into replacing that with a steel one we'll see how much all that is <sighs> almost lost my cool there Okay, that's uh, what we lose. Uh, snap ring. Okay, so what I had to do is I shoved my light, which is about to lo uh, learn some flying lessons, but I, I just bought it, so I don't want to mess it up. Stuck it on here so I can see what I'm doing. Took the smaller pair of um, snap ring pliers, and I bent my ends out just a little bit so they would kind of take up the gap. And I got it, as soon as I got it and kind of wiggled it around, the shaft just kind of fell out. This clutch pack looked pretty good. Nothing on these burnt up. We could probably rerun these, just replace the bad parts, really. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. What we got going on here? Come on, come on. So let's see, do we have anything? On my C6, this wavy plate here was broken. Um, probably replace that. Um, yeah, definitely went that way. Probably end up replacing the uh, roller bearings there. So. This is the top. You hear the cat scratching at the door. These looked okay. And then we got a wavy spring. This is to cushion the shifts. So That one's okay. What do we look like under door number three? This one just has a few clutches in it. Yeah, we'll need to make a tool to push this down. Um, I'm probably just gonna buy the tool so that it's right. But we gotta push this down because we need to replace all the seals in that. So, here's our bottom plate. Friction. Got a little 
little bit of something there. I think there's a, just kind of go in one way like that. Oh yeah, that was starting to burn up. Gotcha. Okay, let's see how we look on this one. Empty bag. Can't tell if this is the natural color for this one, but really nothing too bad. It looks like the only real problem that this had was that um, intermediate not intermediate, but uh, the uh, planetary, planetary gear set. Maybe I just pop that right back in there. Real simple, like. So that guy in the back, I'm gonna deal with that later. I think we got enough tore apart for today. Um, that's going to kind of conclude today's video. We'll get into the other stuff like looking at the pump. Um, we'll see how that looks. Um, I don't really feel like getting into it right now. I'm kind of I'm getting a little burnt out here because <laughs> oh, I'm glad I don't do this for a living. <laughs>